Welcome to episode two of the Gunny versus the Tribes people on the new difficulty, the Crucible, where we got rated twice on day 1.53, again on day 5.78, and here we are on day 6.3 with a pretty good amount of wealth, 30k, mainly I guess due to the items that are on the map, 18k for the items, which I mean I guess we have some decent items like we got a hunting rifle, some grenades, and then we got a bunch of magical leather that we need to sell off because we can't really craft it anything too amazing right now. Or I guess we could try, I mean Dora Banch has got 10 crafting skill, also in the first episode we did pick up a few guns and so I feel like we can make use of those if we do alter our base defense a bit. Before we do that though I want to use a more durable material rather than just wood and the material we want to use right now is steel. We don't have anyone currently that's all that good at mining. thomber has got four but over at this ruins we got parts of a crashed spaceship with this ship salvage and two ship chunks as well as there's a not quite constructed bed and we can actually finish that off. As long as we get door banch over here we just got to put a bit more wood into it and we can turn this into possibly a decent quality bed with Dora Banch's 14 construction. This is just cool because we can't currently make beds and part of this mod is that you get a lot more prisoners as it is harder to kill people so we're gonna be needing a lot more beds. We got Breeks over here chopping down some of these trees and the bed turned out to be good so that's nice. We are currently using some lower quality beds and let's also have Dora Branch uh, deconstruct these ship chunks for a good amount of steel and there's some advanced components in here too and some plasteel. We'll probably just end up selling the plasteel and advanced components though because we're not gonna use those for quite some time and they have a market value of $200 so we do not want them to be sitting in our base that's just going to raise our wealth. After deconstructing all the ship parts we got a good amount of steel, some components which we can use, and some silver which is nice. First off let's use some of that steel to make a research bench in Ram's room. Let's plop down a stool in there too and let's give her a torch lamp as researching is 20% harder in the dark. As far as what text to research I think we're going to go for this one as it allows us to make mana pots and it'd be nice to have mana pots so we can spam goats heal. It only has a cooldown of 8 seconds but it does cost a lot of mana so if we can start mass producing mana pots that should increase our survivability by a lot. On second thought, first we're going to do complex furniture so we can build vents as that's our main priority right now because we need to set up venting systems between these rooms. If we do, we only have to build like a couple coolers and it will keep everyone in the entire structure cooled versus if we don't have vents, we have to build a cooler in everyone's room and that's just not efficient because they take wood, a lot of wood in fact. You have to keep refueling them. Right outside our base, there's these Gallimimuses which are super quick. They move at eight movement speed and we can use them as mounts. Looks like they have a 20% chance to be tamed. You can also use plant scraps to tame them too. We get those from chopping down pretty much any plants and we can't turn them into fertilizer just yet because we don't have the tech for it. Romper and Thor both joined us and they have really good mining. Thor is 14 and Romper has 11. And for each compacted steel we mine we're getting quite a bit because these guys are dwarves and when they mine they get 10% more yield and because they're a dwarf they also mine quicker. Okay I think that's actually enough steel for now. I want to mine all this out but it just keeps going and we don't really have much use for steel right now I don't know if we want to use it for base defense or if we want to build our walls out of much less valuable material like these sandstone chunks. We do have to research stone cutting though which only takes 450 research and we're gonna do that right now because we did research complex furniture and now we can build these vents and we did set up a venting system indoors. I don't know if this single passive cooler is gonna be enough to cool the entire base and right now it's looking like it's not. Outdoors it's 84 degrees and inside it's 81. We'll probably have to build a couple more passive coolers but at least with our venting system we won't have to build one in every room now. It's kind of odd. Our first raid where we got raided by two factions was on day 1.5. Then we got raided by just Thomber on day 5.68. And since then we have not got a single event and now we're on day 12. We did finally get a poison ship event though and that might be a bit scary because there's probably mechanoids inside. We're gonna have Mimbo fire at it and yeah that pissed it off. They have lancers with charge lances which are sniper rifles. We gotta be careful. Mimbo's in range of one of them. Oh that was close. We don't outrange those things but they're not gonna charge at us I don't think. Oh here we go. Group of Federation soldiers. I wonder if the danger followed up with more danger thing means that there's two events that come instead of one. And yeah, these guys look pretty strong. They have a bunch of these Seekers, which apparently are scouts. They are melee, but Jambo and Lurga have guns. These guys are gonna run right in the mechanoids. Yeah, they're fighting each other. It's just that it's only Jambo and this Seeker. The rest of them are coming for our main base, which we don't really care about. There's a traitor right outside. And holy cow, these Elder Things have laser guns and they just one-shot those things. I think these Elder Things might be a little bit broken with those laser guns and we need to stay on good terms with them because we do not want them attacking us. And Thomber was apparently outside. He got down, but he's not going to die. He's fine. We got to now deal with this poison ship part as it's frying nearby trees and plants and the radius of which will kill plants gets bigger over time and eventually I think it will just envelop the entire map assuming we don't deal with it. So we're going to deal with it 
right now. We brought this Ankylosaurus up here by mounting it and we're gonna ram dismount it. We then made it so Ankylosaurus has to go to area two and we put area two around the ship part. We just needed to tank some fire initially and they're not actually shooting at it yet. Okay, there they go. I think they pissed it off maybe. I think it will attack them. If not, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna have everyone shoot. Okay, we already knocked down one of these guys. What the heck? Someone just threw grenades, I think, and that actually really injured our Ankylosaurus. It's gonna bleed out in five hours. On second thought, maybe we leave the grenades at home and let's have everyone just melee that thing down. And we got it. That was actually pretty easy. Now we'll have everyone beat on this ship part and break it. And we destroyed it for one advanced component, some components, some plasteel, good amount of steel, and a probe psychic engram, which can be used on someone that's been psychically awakened, and that will give them an ability. It's also a ram used for advanced heal on the Ankylosaurus, and she did get two level ups, but we're just having her reduce the cost of advanced heal. It now costs 20 mana versus 24, and we're just gonna have her spam that on the Ankylosaurus until she's oom. It's now pretty healed up. It's only got two wounds left. One more heal should do it. Never mind. I think the reason why I didn't heal that wound is because there was two wounds on the same spot. And what? It's not healing that thing. It did restore its health though, but it's not a big deal. It's now got 17 hours and we can bandage it up back at base. And Ram did get a lot of XP for doing that. She's almost level three. Four people got sick from malaria. Oh no. This is what happens when you get too many people. The game starts trying to kill them off. All right, well first Ram's gonna tend herself and she got a 100% 10 on that malaria due to the fact that she was using really good medicine. We don't have much of that. We'll use our good medicine on goat as well. And we got a 96% 10 on her. We'll just use herbal medicine on Ram for her. And we got a 73% 10 on him. He should be fine. Cause yeah, he's a dwarf. He gets over diseases quicker. And then we'll use some herbal medicine on needles too, who by the way is down to 22.9 resist. I think we'll just end up recruiting here cause I was thinking, yeah, we don't really need the 15 animals. If Brixo's only job was to deal with animals cause she would eventually surpass that pretty easily. She does have a burning passion for animals, but we're mainly having her plant right now cause we're kind of running out of food. So it'd be nice to have someone just dedicated to only dealing with animals, taming them and training them up. Cause we do actually have a lot of animals right now. We teamed up four Four Gallimimuses and we need to train them as well as two Ankylosauruses and a Gigantilope. Speaking of taming animals we have this Brachiosaurus which I was thinking about killing because we need the meat. We have four simple meals left but we're completely out of meat. I think however instead we'll have Thor use his animal bond on it and we can do that because it only has 70% wildness. It's surprisingly not that wild even though it's a pretty beastly animal. He can do this to one animal and now this Brachiosaurus is bonded with him. Doing this makes this Brachiosaurus move quicker, have better manipulations so it hits harder, takes longer to go into pain shock, and gets more melee dodge chance. So we'll be quite the formidable fighter. I think these things are really tanky and we can use it as like a last resort meat shield type of thing or we can set it on trade missions, which we're not gonna do yet because we do have people that are sick right now. Speaking of sickness, Brixio is almost level two and we're gonna try to get him there by spamming poison on these aero fleets. Poison's only got a 20 second cooldown, so we'll use it again. And if we use it one more time, he'll level up. Let's actually harvest this heal root while we're waiting for the cooldown to come back up. We're gonna need that for attending these diseases. And one more poison. Does give him a level up. We can now give Brixio Cure Disease, which has the potential to cure most diseases and infections. Ram did get a really good 10 quality on herself and she's definitely not gonna die from the disease, but we would like to cure her first so she can tend to the other people who got diseased. So yeah, let's try to use that on Ram and let's see if it works. It's got a pretty long cast time and it does cost 35 mana. And it failed. Unable to cure this type of disease. Oh no. Ah, uh, apparently we have to level up disease knowledge to level one so that we can cure malaria, which should actually take that long. We'll just spam poison on some more animals once his mana pool gets back up. This arrow fleet that we poisoned apparently did not take damage from the poison and it's pissed. We're gonna have Thor come over here with the Brachiosaurus and oh, is it running? That's gonna be a one shot, I bet. Okay, I don't know what just happened. Apparently they blow up. On the bright side, Ram is almost immune to malaria. It's only at 53% and she's at 93. Goat's doing really good too. Her immunity is at 78 and malaria is only at 50. When she's through with that, we're finally gonna be able to go on our trade mission and we need her because she's gonna negotiate really well. And there we go. Goat finally developed an immunity to malaria. Looks like she was the last one as Niels has already developed one and so is Romfer. We may wanna let the malaria go down to zero though as it is lowering her consciousness by 5% which will affect trade prices slightly. Go 
goat is completely cured now and we're gonna bring along Membo because he's not really doing anything. We have a good amount of food in the base and we'll have them ride these two Gallimimuses which are really quick and we'll bring along this Ankylosaurus so it can haul stuff. As far as what we're gonna bring, let's bring a couple meals. I don't think we're gonna bring any of the leather except for maybe this guinea pig fur. It sells for $7.20 a pop. Apparently it's really beautiful but I don't think it makes for that great of clothing. Mainly we're just gonna bring some of our higher tier stuff like this Plasteel, this Forum we got from butchering those droids that attacked us earlier as well as some weapons and we'll bring along some silver. Alright, Membo and Goat made it to the Elven Colony and we're getting a pretty good price for these advanced components. Their market value is 200, we're still getting 120 which is pretty good considering we have absolutely no use for them right now. We could sell off this Probe Psychic Engram or we could try to go for this Psychic Awakening Serum which if used on someone they can use Psychic Abilities. And okay, so if we learn the Probe Ability, that allows us to peer into someone's mind for information they consider valuable which reveals the location of an item stash, bandit camp, or similar quest. Eo Death is actually really cool too. Apparently it removes all traits and replaces them at random. So we capture a prisoner and say they have really good skills but really terrible traits. We can use this and we might get really good ones. Also if we use this on a downed animal, there's a chance that animal will tame and bond to the psychic user. We definitely want to get that. Let's see if we can buy the psychic awakening serum with everything that we have. All the plasteel and the forum. We brought a bunch of melee weapons which do not sell for much. This platy belladon tusk though, coming in clutch for that 207. Axes will actually sell for a lot and this pila we're getting there oh and those by this interface chip and that'll do it Back at base, the elves sent us a bulk goods trader and we have a ton of excess rice. We're gonna sell them most of that for around 800 silver and we're also gonna buy these hats which for some reason they're only selling for 50 cents. Well, at least we'll buy one of them because it increases social impact by 20% and that brings goat's social impact up to 170% which essentially just helps her have more positive interactions with other people and also makes her look really stylish, I guess you could say. As far as who we're gonna give psychic powers to, I think it's gonna be Needles when she does join us because when somebody does use psychic powers, it starts to cause psychic burnout the more and more they use them which will go away I believe over time But while they have it the more psychic burnout they have the lower consciousness they have and also if their psychic burnout gets too high It can apparently kill them So we're gonna use on needles as I think she is the most expendable Even though I would not want to lose her with their 15 animals everyone else is just way too valuable So we'll use her as a test dummy for this mod. I looked over the comment section of it It's got five stars and no one was saying they were getting people killed from using it So I think it's something that if you're just really careful and you're just throwing out psychic abilities left and right. You're trying to freaking roleplay as Mewtwo. I think you're gonna have a bad time. But as long as we just manage her psychic burnout, I don't think she'll have any problems. And we just got new lovers. Menbo pursued Ram, and Ram is now Menbo's lover. Ooh, Menbo. How did you do that one, man? I guess he's tough, so that might have impressed her. And he's trigger happy. I wonder if that applies to his bedroom skills as well. Oh, it's just Ram the priest. I guess she's not anything special. Although, I guess she's really smart. Intelligence can definitely be attractive. I was thinking he somehow landed the beautiful goat. It's pretty easy to get ram and goat's names mixed up. And ooh, it looks like we're now getting raided by a pretty large force. They don't have a lot of high tier weapons though. I'm only seeing a musket and they have this crossbow. It looks like these guys are actually bringing us some tools. I'm seeing three of them have hammers, which increase construction speed, smithing speed, and smoothing speed. The success chance doesn't really matter because as long as we're above a construction, there's no chance construction will fail. And by the way, plus 25% I think means there's no chance to botch because the base chance to botch is 25% fun fact and here they come we have been doing some modifications to the base and we've had door bench and non-stop crafting sandstone blocks so we can turn them into sandstone walls and also I don't think I ever went over these embrasures which are essentially just holes in the walls and we can shoot through them enemies can shoot at us but they have reduced accuracy when they're shooting into them and the idea here is we have a maze which currently is unfortunately incomplete and I don't know if they're actually gonna try to go through it yeah they're just gonna walk right around it which does kind of suck but Thor can snipe at them while they're walking around it um, we'll have everyone move into this other room amp success chance I don't know what that was and I don't know what these guys are doing down here what the heck are they doing Oh, there's no way into the base. We have someone come over here and open this wooden door. I completely forgot about that. I guess we'll send Membo over here to do it. And Toad actually went down. Okay, this guy's actually really good. I was looking at his stats. He's a quick sleeper and he's got a burning passion for plants. We can always use more people with burning passions for plants, but he's also a lightning mage, which I don't even know what a lightning mage does, but I was thinking it would be really nice to capture him and he did go down. He's currently in shock. He's only got five hours though, so I think we're gonna have to get someone out there to retrieve him. Also, apparently Thor got tagged really hard in the arm and almost shot his arm off. It's at four out of 30. I think if it gets down to zero, his arm's completely gone. And by the way, we have this buff amp. I don't 
know where that came from. Maybe it was from Romper's entertaining ability. I have no idea, but it makes him take less pain, gives him a lot more manipulation, movement, but makes him get tired quicker. But yeah, let's get Ram out here to heal his injuries, and let's try to have Membo see if we can open that door and keep it open. It should stay open now because I selected the option to have it hold open, and I don't know if we should have Thor keep tanking here. At least not until he's healed up. Let's drop some heals on him. And yeah, here they come. Now they're going to go through our maze. I'm going to throw over here, throwing out some shots. And I don't know if I want to have these guys grouped up. Okay, Chan went down. That's good. He didn't get killed. Can we somehow rescue Toad, by the way? He's got four hours left. We could have Ram go on a rescue mission for Toad. And Thor is actually full HP. That's really good, too. Off of, what was that, two heals? His arm is completely good now. And holy cow, a lot of these people went down. There's like five people, six people down right now. And Chaz, I don't know what Chaz is doing, but he went face first into one of our spike traps thinking that was some kind of escape route. Needless to say, he's out of the picture. And let's not kill these guys while they're running away. Let's look at the skills of the down prisoners. Chan has a ton of burning passions though, holy cow. And he's physically adept so he can learn combat forms, although his combat's not that good. I do like frog stats though, he's got a burning passion for shooting, we can always use more shooters. He does work a bit slower, well I guess it's a she. She doesn't like men, which I don't know how much of a problem that's going to be. But with Steadfast, it's harder for her to have a mental breakdown. So I think she'd be really good on like a caravan mission, just protecting the caravan. We just need to give her some combat equipment. Now Ram's seriously going to have to work some magic. Okay, she actually just saved Toad. The heal in 110 was all it took for Toad. Now we're going to have her save Frog. These are the only two people we really care about rescuing. We're also having everyone else come in here and help 10 too even though their medical skills are terrible and yeah it looks like frog's gonna survive nine hours left i think instead of having door banch attend we should probably have him working on these floors because currently there's a bunch of stony soil in here and this room is i'm guessing really dirty yeah negative 0.83 cleanliness that's pretty bad we got most of the floor built membo is cleaning up the room and now the cleanliness is down to negative 0.31 we got Dora Banshee in here making some beds, and he just made a masterwork bed. The chances of him doing that with his 15 construction are 2.83%. So yeah, that was really lucky. Masterwork beds are just amazing. They're beautiful to look at. People get more comfort in them and mainly people rest quicker in them so they don't need to sleep as long. And holy cow, these guys have a lot of equipment. We just stripped them all and that is a lot of stuff. And yeah, we just got an infection. Reese, who apparently is 68, he's an old dude and he has a bad back, which is horrible. He moves slower, gets less manipulation. Overall, just not someone that we want to join us anyways got the infection, so that's good. But we will still tend them anyways. We want to save all these prisoners because we can sell them as slaves at least the ones we don't want 30 percent 10 though that's pretty bad this dude's not looking like he's gonna be surviving this one maybe we didn't even give him medicine apparently we're all out of herbal medicine one thing i also forgot about is ram and menbo are now lovers and they want to sleep together which is perfect because we're currently using menbo's room as our prisoner cell so we're gonna plop them down a double bed come on masterwork Nah, it's just good. That's still okay, though. There is a 30% chance it could have been excellent, but 50% chance is good, so that's what we could expect. Iliona got an infection as well, and her 10 quality was only 38%, but she's going to survive. Her immunity is 4% over the infection, but Reese, on the other hand, he is not doing good at all. The infection is at 69%, and his immunity is only at 21. I think this is partly due to the fact that he is old but mainly I think it's due to the fact that he has really low blood filtration, and that's because one of his kidneys and his liver got injured in the fight. Reese is basically a goner, it's not like we can amputate his torso or anything. And I was looking over some of the people we captured, like Patricia does have good shooting, but like we don't need her burning passion for art and social, and she has terrible traits. And like even Shan has a lot of burning passions for a lot of stuff, but we don't need any of that stuff. And he's physically adept, which is nice, but he's terrible at shooting in melee, so I think we're just gonna sell him off. While we're getting ready to leave, Patricia apparently got possessed, and let's see if if goat can calm her no she didn't calm her she's still possessed and apparently she's about to haunt lloyd i don't know exactly what that means and yeah that was an extreme mental breakdown she's at zero percent mood i guess she's really hungry we've not been feeding our prisoners very well she's just been vomiting everywhere non-stop and it's making this room really dirty we're gonna membo drop a disabling shot on her and hopefully that will fix her whole issue yeah she's no longer possessed but we could leave now except for we do have multiple groups of enemies coming towards us this is just one of them this is their largest group the other groups are kind of small and these guys do have assault rifles at least this guy does. I don't know if we really have to do anything for this raid because we got a dwarven goods trader right outside our base. And yeah, they are fighting these guys for us. I think if too many of these dwarves die, we will lose relations with... I guess it's the dwarven hill clans, which would kind of suck. And there we go. One of the ferals groups is already running. Lewis is down. I'm seeing some decent medicine on the ground, some packaged meals, some silver, a lot of silver, and some guns. And it looks like there's... 
three enemies from what I can see that are down. Karmas is also down as well. We can strip the dwarf and their faction won't actually care. Reese has died apparently. That was the old guy that got infected. But that's okay. That's just another bed we can use for capturing these guys. The only one of them that's actually bleeding is Call, And he's got six hours. We should be able to save him. Well, our prison room did fill up a bit more. And Shiro's actually really solid. He's got a burning passion for animals with a decent amount of skill in it already. And he has a burning passion for shooting. And he's a careful shooter. Which means he takes a little bit more aiming time. But he gets more accuracy. And there's a lot of guns that are really good with this trait. Mainly ones that have really low aiming time. Say it's like 0.3 seconds. So it's only going to boost his aiming time up to like 0.4. He's also a fast learner so he's gonna learn that shooting and animals quicker and he does have an annoying voice which is kind of annoying i guess unfortunately he's got 70 resist though and that's gonna take forever to recruit him and that's the same with wire she's got 65 resist mccall's got 84 there's no way mccall's gonna join us that's just gonna take way too long the only person that we can recruit fairly soon is lewis who's only got 38 resist he's got three really good traits optimus gives him a six permanent mood bonus the only thing is he doesn't really have all that good of skills he's not good in combat and oh, we're about to leave. We're literally packing everything up. We got the caravans going. We got the freaking gigantelopes. And it looks like everyone is about to try to bust out of prison. Well, this is what I was trying to avoid by selling off all these prisoners. I think the way we're going to deal with this is Romfer has 9 melee, Thomber has 10, and Membo has 8. Membo is also really tough. We're going to send them all in here and try to beat as many of these people down without killing them. And if there's anyone that we want to save, it's going to be Toad, who is leaving first. He is leading the charge. We're going to try to get a disabling shot on him and see if we can just knock him out. Disabling shot. Capture. Okay, we got him. Now we got Romper fighting Frog. Frog's knocked out. We're going to capture Frog. Wires got knocked out by Membo. We're going to capture her. What's going on with the rest of these prisoners, though? Are they not going to do it? It says there were way more prisoners that were involved in the prison break, but I think all the ones that we were sending on the caravan did not try to prison break. Oh, yeah, Karmis, you want to go berserk? We got a sibling shot for you, buddy. What? So these two dwarves from the trader got injured in the last battle, and we were healing them up, but Karmus eventually went berserk because his mood's really bad. And we used the Sabling Shot on him, and now we're hostile with the Dwarven Hill Clans, which I guess isn't a huge deal. There's no Dwarf territories around us. We'll probably start getting raided by Dwarves as well. It's not the worst thing though, because I did kind of want to recruit Limber. He's got 15 shooting, he's a Death Knight as well, and he's got a burning passion for cooking and plants. He's only negative trait is that he's greedy, but we can just give him a really nice bedroom. Our caravan that was loaded up with slaves made it over to the Elven Colony, and we brought a bunch of animals because they were speeding us up a bit and like we can sell this brachiosaurus for 1245 bucks holy cow chan actually sells for 350 not bad but the rest of these guys 190 166 ew. 57 110 for alonia i think she does have a infection yeah but she developed immunity she's not that good though her skills are kind of bad as far as what to buy from these guys we're gonna get the ego death psychic engram and with that we'll have around 600 leftover silver that we can use for some other trade all right the caravan made it home in one piece and needles is about to join us go just needs to talk to her one more time and she will join us and i think we'll use psychic awakening on her which will allow her to use psychic powers and we'll be doing that in the next episode with that i want to thank you all for watching and i will We'll see you in the next one.